morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It's Charity Smith, Miss Mogul, the host of Master Your Morning with Miss Mogul. I'm back in the studio today on this rainy Tuesday morning, but it's still a wonderful day today. We have lots of energy, lots of information, and what I hope you're doing today is getting your laptop and your latte ready. We're going back to school with Winfong Bruche, and we're learning about the loan approval process. Now, we started this entire series at the top of the month talking about how this really can be approached as the dating game. And Winfong shared some information with us about how to prep for this process and really be empowered and own the process. And I think that was the main takeaway uh, from the main, the first show, Winfong, is really how to own the process, to get involved in it, not to just pass that off to someone else. And if you do, at least you know what to be looking for and what the benchmarks are, what the um, requirements are to really be engaged in it. So that was the first show. Uh, and then at the end of that show, we talked about uh, and this was something I, I really love that you brought up, Wen Fong. It's about how the banker works for us. The banker is on our team, and it's not the other way around. We're not uh, passing all of the power across the table, but the power really is housed here and how to uh, leverage that for our, our growth. The second show was about debt elimination, and oh my God, that was such um, a, a power-packed show. You shared with us several tools to use. Uh, the first one was annualcreditreports.com, and then you gave us an online calculator to help us now start calculating our debt-to-income ratios and how to get in the best position for, uh, for getting that, that loan. And you also shared with us uh, the importance of understanding that personal credit, how that plays on uh, the the, the uh, loan approval process and how we have to own that. And so all of that has just kind of jumped us, and I know I ran through that quickly, but for all of those who, of you who have missed our first shows, please, by the way, our Facebook uh, audience, make sure you're putting your comments online. Wen Fong and I go back to check those. So if you have specific questions about your, your particular uh, situation, I have the expert here in-house who can help walk us through that, and you won't find this anywhere. And so that's another reason why I'm really thankful that you uh, are doing this series with us, Wen Fong, is because we don't get the opportunity to see the whiz behind the mask. <laughs> Who's pulling the levers and what those levers look like? But we have you in the audience, uh, in, in the studio today. And so what I'm really hoping you all do is take this opportunity seriously. Those of you who are really serious about growing, this is not a hobby. This is not a podcast for hobbyists and for necessarily novice, but for women who are serious about their enterprise, their business, their brand, their growth. They're serious about employing other people and making a really positive impact in our economy. This is the platform and the show for you. So without further ado, I'm off my soapbox, box, but I might get back on it. <laughs> Welcome back, Wen Fong. Thank you. It's time to empower your finance. Ladies, <laughs> let's go. Now, I thought I had energy. No, 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 no. <laughs> you are power packed. Thank you again. And I want our audience to really appreciate who it is that's sitting across from me. You are a pro, uh, um, you manage a portfolio of over $200 million. That's no small feat, right? And so over 25 years, Correct. close to 25 years in the banking industry. Um, and certainly you have kind of made your way through the ranks. You shared your story about how you uh, and your family came here from Taiwan and some of the travels and some of the misfortunes that your father experienced in the banking process and really how that catapulted you to really dive in. I believe it was first to help him, but now there's a bigger mission at play. And Tell I think us about you're it. absolutely right. And it's not so just that. I myself got a degree in finance. Yes. And guess what? When I got out, I had no idea. I ruined my credit. Oh, I wow. ruined my credit for seven years. I had no cash. Mm -hmm. I literally had a roof leak. I had a little condo, and I didn't have any money to repair. Right. And here I am, someone that actually learned the finance. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why I said, you know what? In order for me to know everything, I got to get into banking, and yeah. that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And throughout the years, I have one thing I've noticed, Charity, yeah. is that people have worked so hard with their money. Yeah. 
but it disappeared. Yeah. Have you ever wondered? Yeah. Have you ever wondered what happened to your money at the end yeah. of the day or at the mm-hmm. end of the month? Mm-hmm. So what happened? Mm-hmm. So what is it about that we work so hard and there's no way for us to control that? And mm-hmm. that's the reason why I'm so excited to share with you yeah. a strategy that I've been using to really coach my client. Mm-hmm. I had this client that he came in. He was actually overdrawn his account. He goes, when Fong, can you do me a favor? Can you do something to kind of turn my overdraft protection so that I can use my like $650 on my account? I said, okay. So I said, you got to promise me. You only use this for to repair your car. Mm-hmm. He promised. Mm-hmm. And guess what he did when he left my office? Mm-hmm. He walked out next door, mm-hmm. got himself a smoothie king. Mm. Keep in mind, he didn't have any money. He had an overdraft account of $650 that I allowed him. Mm-hmm. He went and got that $5 smoothie. That smoothie cost me $30 because I charged him $25 overdraft fee. <laughs> oh, my God. $30. Yeah, for a smoothie. Thank you. I mean, I, I better yeah. use that for a bottle of wine yeah. or something that's nice, yeah. right? So that just tells the mentality of how people don't realize how to manage their money and what is it about them. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just right, dive into that right now. Come on. Let's do it. So here's the thing. One thing that I have created is called the... The bucket budgeting. So what does that bucket budget mean? Mm-hmm. Bucket budgeting means you have to make sure you bucket every single dollar. Mm-hmm. The way I envision from the banking experience that I have noticed that everybody mix their income and their expenses. Mm-hmm. Let me repeat that. They have one account where all the income coming in, all the debits going out. That's one of the fundamental differences mm-hmm. that you really had to think outside the box. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Had another client come in. He actually had over $500. $500 overdraft fees oh and he God. wanted me to refund the money. He was crying in the lobby. Oh and this my. is a grown man that has really lived his life. Yeah. So I talked to him and I said, sir, help me understand what exactly is going on. Mm-hmm. He explained the situation so I kind of coached him around what mm-hmm. is the best way to handle that. Mm-hmm. Guess what happened? And I gave him the money, by the mm-hmm. way. I used my authority, gave me the money back. The next week, he did the same thing. Okay. And this time I said, sir, I can't. So what I really want for everybody to take away today is really understand there's a way for you to get rid of this madness mm-hmm. and there's a methodology. And so before we get into that, and mm-hmm. this is a key point that I really want to hone in with our audience as well. There is a strategy. There is a science. And we talked right before the show started about real paradigm shifts. <clears throat> We've kind of thrown around that clause and that phrase for quite some time now. But when it comes to finance and banking, how we've done it is really in influenced by families, by culture, by influences that are not necessarily in the finance industry. And we've adopted those things. But here we have a finance expert that's saying there really is kind of like, you know, I I make it uh, think like, you know, if you're wearing a wig and it's not shifted right. (laughs) you got to shift it. Shift the wig to where it's right. But it really is a, a different way of looking at how we handle and manage our finances. And I think the difference between that, what you see out there is the media. Media mm-hmm. tells you things. I'm someone that actually been in the trenches. I'm the one roll the sleeve. I'm the mm-hmm. one tell the customers, look, this mm-hmm. is what I'm seeing. This is what's happening. Mm-hmm. And that's what I really want to share the truth in the right way to do it And better. so we're going to take this first commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to school. Walk us through the steps and the methodologies of how to change our paradigms about banking. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. You may know me as the host of Master Your Morning with Ms. Mogul. Perhaps we've done business together with Mogul Life Real Estate. Hello, my name is Charity Smith. I am the author of The Roar of a Woman. I am sponsoring a really special campaign this year and I really need your help to make this happen. I am sponsoring 100 books for the Houston Area Women's Center. And you may ask, why is that important? Think about where we are in today's climate, politically, socially. Now is the time for us to really hear the voices of women. Typically during the holidays, it's a time of joy and celebration. But for many of the families with the Houston Area Women's Center, there's no hope. There is no celebration. I want to change that, but I need your help to do that. I'm sponsoring 100 books for these women. Why? I want to not only sponsor inspiration for the holidays, but give them a roadmap for success in their upcoming year. So many times we hear about celebrations and sponsorships during the holidays, and it's just for that time. It's my ambition to inspire these women to live a full empowered life after their time at the Houston Area Women's Center. Join me in the Lioness Den. Sponsor a book today. I'll tell you how. Go to my website, charity.com. I'll spell it for you. C-H-A-I-R-I, D as in David, E-E, charity.com. 
www.ChristianMusicGroup.com. You'll see the button right there at the top of the slider. Click on that button and just fill out the information. We'll make sure those books are delivered to the Houston Area Women's Center on December the 6th. And if you'd like, we'll even mention you in that donation. But go there today. We're not just sponsoring a celebration for the holidays. We're sponsoring inspiration for a lifetime. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back. We're back in the lioness den talking to the lioness herself, Winfong Bruche. And we're going to dive into this next segment. We kind of started the build up and the crescendo into um, budgeting from the banker's perspective. And here's what we found out. Most of the time, bankers are not talking to us about budgeting, right? No. But I'm so glad you're going to sit down, walk us through the process. Thank you to all of our Facebook audiences. Remember, ladies, chime in your questions or your comments. We have an expert in-house now who could just maybe connect that dot you've been waiting on. So dive in, Wenfang. How so, do we talk about budgeting from the banker's perspective? Not only as a banker perspective, this is always what I use personally. Yeah. So I just want to kind of let you know what I'm practicing is what I preach and what I use. So a mm -hmm. couple things. First, you've got to have four different type of counts. Okay. Now, don't fall apart. Don't give me that. Say, oh, no, yes, you can. The reason I say you need to have four accounts mm -hmm. is, first of all, you've got to have a regular account called a net income account. Yeah. That is the account where you have all the deposit. Mm -hmm. From there, I want you to open up a savings account. Mm -hmm. This is where you are going to deposit quite a few categories, which I'm going to explain that in a minute. Mm -hmm. That's called a cushion account. Okay. Third, you're going to have a checking account that's going to call a mandatory account. That mandatory account is for everything ranging from your utility bills, mm -hmm. your gas bills, your phone bill, your inner life. Well, only when is mm. mandatory. Okay. Another word. Okay. Cable does not count <laughs> as a live account. <laughs> gotcha. Beautiful jewelry does mm -hmm. not count mm -hmm. as a live account. And what I'm talking about is a bare bone. Okay. If you don't have these, will you be able to have the lights on? Will you be evicted? Mm -hmm. That's what I call mandatory. Gotcha. And then you've got to have food. So that parts of that. And food is not restaurant. Right. Food is milk, bread, what you have mm -hmm. to, to keep it fuel going. So that is the mandatory account. And the last account is called the life account. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some subcategory I'm going to go in detail about how to go about operating that. Mm -hmm. So let's recap. You think about, wait a minute, Winfa. How can you ask me for all this account? I can't even manage one. Mm. Here's the truth to be told. If you know how to dive in all the different accounts to really put the money into a separate account, you're going to find your life so much happier. Mm -hmm. Because every single month, you know exactly what's in that bucket. You don't have to worry about that. Now, most of the band, they will give you a checking account which comes with direct deposit. But once you plug in your savings account, a lot of times those are free. Mm -hmm. Credit unions out there or some other banks out there, mm -hmm. they're going to give you a free account mm -hmm. regardless. So just something to be mindful. Do not get to have the account really, really disappoint you. Oh, my God, I got to keep all the account. It is very simple. So what I'm going to dive in right now mm -hmm. is the way that you have to start out your budgeting is first, you got to take an inventory. Ladies. Spreadsheet is the easiest way to do it. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I have. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you took an inventory of what you have? Mm -hmm. the clothing right look at our closet yeah. and that's one thing i really want everybody to think about so the way you're going to start thinking about it is really listen down how much does it cost me to have a rent mm -hmm. gas water electrical bill cell phone internet that is going to be one you have to know how much because that is the basic thing second thing i want you to take a look in and see what are some of the reserve that you need and mm -hmm. when i say reserve i meaning medical Mm -hmm. car repair we don't think about that no we don't mm -hmm. and i want people to budget that out because what's one thing that you had to do vacation how many times that we actually take the credit card and swap have a nice mm -hmm. time at vacation and mm -hmm. we'll come back Ooh, mm -hmm. there goes that credit card mm -hmm. no we're going to change that we are going to reserve the money so every time we go on vacation we know it's going to pay for it because we got money reserved so those are the categories i call reserve within that there's also what I call escrow. And again, mm -hmm. these are the subcategory of the cushion account. So the way the escrow works is if you own a home, you got to make sure that you budget your HOA, yes. homeowner associations, mm -hmm. property taxes, flood insurance. If those Big of you don't have Texas. flood insurance, please have it. Yes. Home insurance, life insurance. And if you rent, make sure that you can budget your renter insurance. Mm -hmm. And the reason I want you to have that step aside is because at the end of the year, you want to make sure you have those reserves. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I didn't have any money. I had to pay my car insurance every other quarter. Guess what? I paid those extra. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Those some of the extras should not be paid to these people. You should be paying yourself. So I want to make sure those are reserved. Also, my clients, oh my gosh, every year at the end of the year, I have to give financing to pay their property taxes. Yeah. So that is something you want to make sure you get away from that. So that is self. But most important thing, when we talked about having this account, mm-hmm. we have to make sure that you reserve 20%. So what I mean by that, 20% Somebody just gasped right there. Like, <gasps> I know. Yeah. They're thinking it's hard enough to save 1%. I'm mm-hmm. talking about every single month, ladies and gentlemen, put 20% away for savings category. Mm-hmm. you got to save at least 20%. And, and again, I wish we had the slide. We can mm-hmm. show you that. But it's all good because we can talk about very specific how we're going about bucketed this out. So what we're going to do is when you have an example, I'm going to use an example of $5,000. Mm-hmm. If I have a $5,000 right now, you are going to put... 20% of that, so 1000 going into the savings account right away. Mm-hmm. You're going to ask the company to direct deposit that. So that money is there because once you put that money in there, you don't even know that you have it. So that is very important. Okay. Now, once you figure out exactly. Uh, maybe I can hold one up for sure. at the camera. That would so be great. Let's see if we can do it. Can you, can can you see? see, can you see that? Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. So I'm Vanna Black. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Very good. So this is something that I'm going to ask you to hold right okay. here for that part. Okay. okay. We're going to do the first so one? This one. Okay. What we're going to do first is I'm going to hold this. F- that is what we have, how everything's going to go. Mm-hmm. When we talk, can I just point that here? Sure. Perfect. Okay. Right down here, we have what we call the life account. Okay. The life account. We make it work. They're perfect. Okay. See, right here. Mm-hmm. You know what? Let's do this. Here's an example. Okay. Okay, so when you, whatever you do for, before you start budgeting, you got to make sure you do what I call the allocation analysis. Mm -hmm. You're going to allocate exactly what is the mandatory expenses. Yep. You're going to also allocate exactly how much is going to be the escrow, and that's what we talked about, the property taxes and so forth. Mm -hmm. Number three, you're going to really find exactly how much you reserve for your vacation, your child care, and all of that education. And last not least, this is something you should not have. It's called the debt payment section. Mm-hmm. Okay, our goal is to eliminate the debt. But again, right. for now, you got to list out exactly how much is the student debt, how much is the car note, and so forth. And I want you to list out every single month. Once you have that, mm-hmm. what we're going to do is every month, and this is an example, let's just assume that we actually made $5,000. Okay, so $5,000 is going to be A. That's where you are going to pay. You're going to lock that out account. Mm-hmm. So once we have that, you are going to automatically put 10% to your grocery yeah. Grocery. You know, the way I envision groceries, you know what you're going to pay your grocery? Mm-hmm. Cash. Yes. So what you're going to do is not every on the single. Not credit card. Not on the credit card because, come on, why do you pay finance charges for, for your food. credit card? For food. For <laughs> food. Yeah. <laughs> or, so that's something I yeah. want you to pay. And what you're going to do, every time you go to the grocery store, you know how much money you have in the pocket. Right. So that means you're not going to overspend. Mm-hmm. So that's that. And again, from that category, you'll be able to see that's what we're looking at in terms of how much it goes to the mandatory. So mm-hmm. every single month, you're going to reserve this much of money you don't have to worry about that because oh when the bill comes you're going to use bill pay you're going to write check you're going to pay those mandatory so if everything else fail your roof is covered with there this you category go. there now, you go keep in mind though when you get your pay immediately 20 percent goes to the savings account so now mm-hmm. you already have a thousand dollars right but you also have calculated how much is going for you annually for that escrow account mm-hmm. so what's going to do in the extra spreadsheet yes. actually calculate to 12 mm-hmm. so it Plop automatically tells you how much that you need to put in every single month for that category. Mm-hmm. So all you're doing is you plug in this whole amount, and some of those categories can go to that element. Yeah. The third thing you're going to do is also, because you have that reserve account, remember mm-hmm. the vacation part of it? Yes. You're also going to reserve this much of money in that account. Mm-hmm. So every month, you're going to have this X amount of money plopping into that savings account. And the reason I use the savings account or money market is because that is not something for you to use. I strongly do not recommend you pay your um, property taxes every month. I want you to really reserve it to the end of the year or car insurance. Mm-hmm. Instead of paying every quarter, I want you to only use that. That way you can earn a little interest throughout the time. On your money. Very That's good. Right. So I really always about saving. Third thing, what I really want you to do after you have all of that, then you're going to have a section called a life account. Mm-hmm. So what does a life account mean? It's really talked about what do you have. I'm going to show this okay. right here. You sure. can see it right here. Mm-hmm. It's really about household. Mm-hmm. How many times did you actually have to buy toiletry? Uh, cleaning supply. Mm-hmm. Those are what I call household account. Mm-hmm. Also, within that, there's going to be a debt. You had to pay debt, so you got to budget that. Not only that, I believe in life, you got to have fun. And there my word of having fun is also cash. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because when you start using credit card, yeah, it's you not wanna, fun anymore. It's not fun anymore, especially mm-hmm. when you had to come back and really had to pay yeah. for that interest rate. So that's what I have. 
put in the cash.、Mm -hmm. Last not least, within that account, there is a section called giving account.、Mm -hmm. I'm always about giving back.、Mm -hmm. But you cannot save others if you can't even save, save yourself. yourself. Wait, stop right there. And, and we're on a roll here, but I think that it's so paramount and so key that we really do because even when you're flying, right? When the the the、uh, flight attendant is is there, they're telling you before you can put the mask on someone else, you have to put it on yourself first. So you can't worry about the kids' college and you can't worry about all of that stuff until you really get these things in order. Otherwise, you're perpetually running and trying to catch up. All the time, and you never get to a place where you have what we love to call financial stability. It goes back to that house and that foundation we talked about. I believe in the first show. You don't build a financial house without a solid foundation. Absolutely,、yeah. and that is something that I, I also believe that that should be something that you reserve on the side. Meaning that you have it, because when I'm talking about giving, it's not so much for your part of your organization. I'm talking about people that's down the street that you just、mm -hmm. feel like I want to、mm -hmm. give you ten dollars. I just、mm -hmm. want, I just want to help out with Harvey that hit、mm -hmm. us. Yes, a lot of people they just need that little lift. Yeah, and that is what I'm really looking for. It's somewhat like a colleague.、Mm -hmm. You just don't know what a colleague is involved in, right?、Mm -hmm. You just want to give that extra. So I just want to make sure that is something that you have reserved,、mm -hmm. but save yourself first. There you go. So let's take the second commercial break, and the second part of this show, we're going to talk about putting on that life preserver for ourselves. How do we get ourselves out of these issues? We'll be right back. Wait no longer. The Roar Shop is open and just in time for the fall. Shop our line of tees, shirts, mugs, and more. Choose the perfect piece for you or a friend. Peruse our shop today and roar your own unique sense of beauty. Be sure to pick up a copy of the book that inspired it all, The Roar of a Woman. Go to www.charity.com. www.charity.com. So we're back.、Um, if you have not had an opportunity to, again, go to Facebook and make sure you post your comment or your question,、um, because we have Win Fong here in the studios, and we're learning so much today about budgeting from the banker's perspective. Now, before we went to the last commercial break, you, we、uh, we talked about those four accounts that we need. The I think about it as the big bucket, and then those. Four little buckets on the outside, where we put all of our cash, and then how we begin to allocate it for purpose. Absolutely, those accounts are purposeful. But here's the thing I want to talk about、um, because we left、uh, talking about the analogy of putting on the life jacket financially before we can save ourselves, save our companies, save our families. We have to save ourselves financially first. A lot of folks may think, Wen Fong,、um, that they're they're so overextended. Maybe they don't have the finances or the cash on hand to get out. Do I need a second job? Don't I? Do I need to take on more clients? What's a strategy to now accompany with the budgeting from the banker's perspective? One of the things that I really think before you consider a second job or anything else, really take an inventory of what you have,、mm -hmm. what comes in and what goes out.、Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that is absolutely unnecessary? And the reason I say that is nowadays everything you get are free from the internet.、Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of resources out there you can have for free. So I really want for you to really have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Yeah. What are some of those waste of a thing that you can live without? And that's the reason why I'm all about live without. Take care of those budget. First,、mm -hmm. before you act and split. I'm not saying don't split yourself because I do believe you have to treat yourself well. Yes. But take care of those mandatory ones. Now to go back to your question in terms of having a second job. When you start analyzing your situation, you really cannot find anything else that you can actually have a little cushion.、Mm -hmm. Yes, it's time to think about what can I do. But I really want to caution you:、mm -hmm. when you start taking a second job, I don't want you to sacrifice the time that you spend away from the loved one.、Mm -hmm. I think there's a balance、mm -hmm. because a lot of times, and I had this situation:、um, a single father came to me and said, "Well, look, Winfrey, I need X amount of money just to give my son a Christmas gift." Mm. It touched my heart. It's not the amount of money he was asking for. It's not. What I told him is, I said, and I'm going to use his name, John, for example. I said, John, what I want you to take away is not to give your kids 
that item. I want you to spend the time with him. Mm-hmm. I think that itself is going to spend wow. more than giving you this X amount of money. Mm-hmm. So I really want for you to really kind of peel back because financial wealth is not about having X amount of money. It's really the overall well-being. How do you control your finances from the perspective spiritually, physically, emotionally? Mm-hmm. So when you start diving in, are you buying this item? Is it for your ego or are you buying oh. it? for your spirit so that's something i always teach folks Very when you good. buy it if you feel good just because i have to show up my john doe mm-hmm. and you paid in cash kudos Fine. to you yes if you had to finance you had to put in the credit card mm-hmm. that's when i really want for you to think twice. or if you put it on the credit card but you pay off at the end of the month without paying finances mm-hmm. more power to you that way you can get mileage okay <laughs> I'm all about getting That's perked. a strategy that to is, everything. Yes. Hey, I just came from a business trip. Yeah. Everything of my trip was paid for. Airline was paid for by the mileage. Car pay, Car was paid for. Hotel was paid for mm-hmm. because I was able to accumulate all the different points, but without sacrificing interest because I didn't have to pay anything. So that's one thing really important. Second thing to go back to your question is besides get yourself inventory, have everything laid out on a spreadsheet and I'll be more than happy to share the spreadsheet Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. that is one key. One thing about people that I have noticed that you can think a lot in your mind Mm -hmm. but it gets confused. Mm -hmm. But if you have everything laid in front of you and Excel spreadsheet, I just love it. I mean I use this every single month. Mm -hmm. Literally I will kind of update what I have Mm -hmm. and it's kind of funny. You start taking a look and say oh I think that category mm-hmm. a little more. In other words, my fund account is a little more mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm analyzing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it makes all the difference when you start thinking about what can I do, but it gives power back to you yes. because you control every penny. Yes. And there, after this, you will find every single penny is not going to disappear like what it used to be. There you go. So I just got the, the notification that we're at the end. Never fails. We always run out of time. Um, so just to recap, the big takeaway here is to know what you have going in and out. You really have to see it. You can't guess about it. You'll be surprised how many times going to the dry cleaners or going to get your nails done or going to uh, get gourmet coffee adds up and you say, oh, wow, I'm stretched. I don't have it. I can't do it. And you start making all of these excuses. But like you said, when you really look at it what can I live without or what can I let's just change live without to reallocate how can I reallocate that money or that source for a different purpose yeah I have it but now what do I want to what am I going to do with it? how am I going to use it as a positive tool so maybe instead of for example with me and this was a very personal choice I stopped getting relaxers and I went natural because I wanted one one I just love the way it looks doesn't she look cute <laughs> one I love that but two It was a way for me to reallocate how I was using that money. I stopped giving the money away to somebody to do my hair. And then I started investing in natural products and started doing my own. And if I'm going to say so myself, I kind of like how it's looking. But but it's just those things. What can you do to empower, to take back the power and to release yourself of the excuses? And I think what's funny is that when you start thinking this way, you're going to become so creative. Yes. All your juice is going to be flowing and you're going to be so amazed and you're going to be so proud. The most important you're going to be proud what you've done yes. but don't forget you do need to splurge yourself yes. you have to you have to but treat yourself splurge well. it wisely there you go so that brings us to the end of the show i'm not surprised at all thank you win fong for sharing another tuesday with me it has been in- enlightening it's been impactful it's been insightful um it's just been an answer it's been connecting the dots and i think if i've had that experience i'm sure you all have had that experience as well so thank you again for being in the studio with me i think we have one more show before we wrap up this series so if you have not had the opportunity to post your comment to ask the question you need to ask and if it's private if you don't want it listed here inbox me i'll make sure that i get that question to win fong and i'll reach out to you personally to make sure because it's really about this lady Ladies and gentlemen, it's about you growing your business in integrity and in character and having an alignment, mind, soul, body, spirit. You don't want to be stretched out or stretched out trying to get money when money really isn't the issue. It's alignment that's the issue. And that's a whole nother show. Thank you all for tuning in this time. The show has been brought to you by Mogul Life Real Estate. We were talking about uh, getting uh, the insight 
to create passive income to get you out of some of these situations. Learning how to invest in real estate properly could just be the vehicle for you. Reach out to me and my team at Mogul Life Real Estate 281-676-9857. If you haven't heard, the Roar Shop is making all kinds of noise. We're roaring. Go to charity.com. Um, all of the apparel is there. I have a new line of accessories that I will be um Show, showcasing very soon. I'm wearing one of the creations today that will be featured in the Roar Shop. So mugs, t-shirts, fun apparel, anything you want to put on to help remind you of the inner lioness within, you'll find it at the Roar Shop. Go again today to charity.com and you'll also find the book there that started it all, The Roar of a Woman. Thank you to all of my listeners, to all of my readers. Now I can literally say around the world who have supported the book, I appreciate you so much more than you will ever know. Stay with me. We're growing the brand. We're growing the roar. And I'm so glad you're here with me. So if you didn't know, now you know. You have just mastered your morning. I'll see you next Tuesday.